Hello, welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. Today we're playing Station Ears. Today we'll be continuing with our furnace build. Now last time we built our advanced furnace, we enclosed it in a room to keep it hot. But now we want to automate the output pressure there. So if we're going to automate the furnace to go to the right pressure, the first thing we've got to do is tell it what the right pressure we want it to be. Uh, there's probably a few ways you could do that. I'm just going to use a couple of dials from the IC switches. Well, there we have it. Placed in two dials, one for temperature, one for pressure. And I've put on a couple of displays just for good measures so you can see at a glance what they're set at. This one's going to be temperature. I use a dial for about each incremental meter 100 degrees. So the ingots don't need anything more than 2,000 degrees. So if I give that one say a maximum of 20 which will take up to 2000 and the other one I don't think you need anything past 8 megapascals so I can set that one to about 80 and there we go they're set the first thing we have to get our code to read what's on the switch and write it onto the display before we do anything else with it so we'll get these we we'll use this label it's a lot name these ones we'll save them into the connect them to the chip and we'll start writing some code and there is our code. We have to find our temperature dial, temperature display, our pressure dial, and our pressure display, just for making the code easy to read. There's the devices. We've also de declared some registers, some variables, which is our desired temperature and our desired pressure. Now, if we go to the bottom of the code we had before to eject it, and all we need is three lines for each of those ones to load from the temperature dial the setting multiply that by 100 and save it as our desired temperature then the temperature display we're going to save setting of that which is the desired temperature and repeat it for the pressure so that should just update the displays and do nothing more so confirm it export it so now if we change the dials we have our temperature changing so now I have a way of telling it that if I want to make something at a thousand degrees, switch it to a thousand, and if we want two kilopascals, we're there. So it knows what we want it to be, now we've just got to get it to actually do it. To calculate the pressure that it wants, is a bit of a trick. It's our old, everybody's old famous gas, gas equation, PV equals nRT. Now whatever pressure we want will depend on the temperature we're at. So if at the moment 908, which is 1100 degrees, if we want it to cool down to 1000 degrees and 2000 kilopascals, we have to get the furnace to set it to a little bit over 2000. So as it cools down, it'll be at the right temperature. So, if we take the desired pressure, divide it by the desired temperature, and multiply it by the current temperature, it should give us the pressure we need. So, if you do the maths on that, just trust me on it, it's there. Ah, so back to our code. And here is the code. The find of new variables, the current temperature, the current pressure, and the target pressure, which is what we want to find. Now first up, we need to know what the current temperature is. So we load the current temperature from the furnace, the property temperature. Now to do the calculations, we don't want to divide the desired pressure by the desired temperature and store it in variable R0. We want to multiply R0 by the current temperature and store it in the variable target, target pressure. Right, now I've added an extra display just to show what the result of that is. So we're going to save to that display the target pressure. And now yeah, confirm that, export it, look over there and our extra target pressure is up here. Now remember this, this, this is in Celsius, so that in Kelvin is at 273, that's really 1186 degrees. So we want to be 18.6% hot. 
higher than our than, than our target target temperature, which means our pressure should also be 18.6% higher, which gives us a pressure of 23.76, which looks about right. That's looking pretty good. So I'll be happy with the mass we got there, and we'll do our driver to actually turn the dial now. So a bit more coding. So here's our code from where we left off. And we want to know what the current pressure is, so we've got to load pressure current from the furnace, the value of pressure. Now we're using a set to set to set a flag, a true or false flag. So set greater than if the current pressure is greater than the target pressure, we'll set our general purpose variable R0 to a true or false, 1 or 0. Now we don't want to set our pump to a speed 1 or 0, so we're going to multiply that by 50. So we're just going to multiply R0 by 50 and store it back in variable R0. Um, so now our value will either be 0 for off or 50 for on. I've chosen 50 because, yeah, why not? Uh, now we want to save that value back into the furnace as the setting output. Now that is the value for the output pump. So it's a value stored in R0, we're saving straight back into that. Right ho. So currently our pressure is at 2.193 megapascals. Our target is 1.88 megapascals. So as soon as I upload that, it should switch on the pump and bring that pressure down. Uh, export. Pump switches on. Value drops down. Pump should switch back off again. We're good. It's gotten pretty close to it. Now you can change the value of 50 to a higher or lower number. Uh, the lower numbers will just take longer to reach the desired pressure, and the higher numbers may risk overshooting it, as we've done here. But that will be near enough for us. So the pressure is now automatic. Uh, I don't need that number up anymore, so I could change that to something else, like just counting the number of reagents in the or I can just rip it off. Uh, I'll do some coding and I'll just put the number of reagents up there so it'll count us so that we don't even have to look in there and see how much stuff's in there. Let's get super lazy. Right out, coding. And there we have it, two lines of code. One, to read the number of reagents from the furnace and store it in variable R0. And another one to save it to the display, spare display we had there. And its setting will be set to whatever's in R0. Done. We export that. Our reagents counter goes to zero. That should be pretty much done with our automation. So it's automated pressure, automated ejection, counters, temperature displays, everything we want. Let's give it a drive. Okay, so let's start with our ever popular steel. You can never have too much steel. So 20 coal. To 60 iron. The counter's counting it up. 80 should be all the ingredients. As our steel flashes up, it gets ejected, and we have steel. Easy. Okay, inva. Everybody loves making inva. Well, it's a high temperature and a very narrow pressure range. So we need at least. 1.2, oops, so if we set it to there, now we need 6 to 7 megapascals. So let's just whack it right in the middle and we shall say 650, if we can get there. Okay, so now here's a situation where you may want to actually switch switch the IC off because as you put it in there it recognises that you've got an ingot and it'll spit it straight back out again. So we shall hit our override. We shall put our nickel back in there again. Now it's recognised the nickel is being melted and it is not trying to spit it out. And we shall want our iron. Once again, the 
counter up the top is not updating because we have it switched off. So now we can switch it back on again. Now notice there's 100 items in there and it has not formed an ingot. Right now, so we need 1200. So this is the manual part of it. So all we got to do is start adding fuel. There we go. Immediately got it. As soon as it fired, recognised it and spat it out. How easy is that? And there we have it. Pretty it all up and it blends into the wall of your base quite nicely. Uh, it's all isolated on a transformer. You can switch it all off. One click. Lovely. Now it's not the it's not not the square kilometre of a furnace that some people have built. This is something that's quite achievable as a survival furnace. It doesn't take up a huge amount of materials and not a huge amount of space. We come around the back. How are we doing in here? We're still going our pressures. Pressures at 37 kilopascals, so we're not in any danger of blowing out that ball, but we never really were in any danger in Mars. And that is about it. Let's put it to the true pressure test. Have I actually made something that's idiot proof? It will automatically vent the pressure. But is it enough to stop me doing something real stupid? Let's find out. Got plenty of fuel. Switch it on. Keep making more. Make it as fast as we can. Turn up furnace as fast as we can. 20 megapascals, 44. Can we blow it up? Faster, faster, no, it's venting, we're losing, 49, 50, more, more, our fuel's gone, it didn't blow up, it didn't blow up, I feel somewhat ripped off there, go, 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 ow, I'm somewhat proud of myself and somewhat disappointed at the same time. Well, I have pressure tested it. I have proven it's good. It is safe to 1.3 standard morons. It is idiot proof. Turn the fuel off. I can't store enough fuel to get it hot enough or build up enough pressure. Well, I probably could blow the balance tank. The waste tank there if I really tried. Better let that one go. Um, well, it's a bit of a letdown. Okay sign. Tomorrow's another day. We'll see who wins tomorrow. Um, that's it. That's the furnace. All done. I hope it's given you a few ideas, a few hints. You want to build it? See if you can blow it up. I gave it my best shot. But, as always, don't have to do it my way. Make your own way. Don't follow the instructions. If you're following the instructions, you're not engineering. Catch you next time. See ya!